is going on ladies and gentlemen, it is your host Avery LR32 here, one to bring you guys a video talking about my first locals post link format, one to talk about um, my matchups and stuff, it was a rather small local, but I also want to talk about the first place prize, now it technically didn't come in first place, I'm going to get to that, but are your nipples ready, are you, are you ready, do you, do you want a little teaser, oh, I think you saw too much, you, you sure you want to see this, I think you do want to see this, oh well man, ladies and gentlemen, this was this was the first place prize and your boy plus so hard in a trade to get this beauty I'm gonna do one more pan around it's basically a two player link format Matt so yeah that was the first place prize I freaking love this map look at how long this thing is that's what she said but yeah uh, this was the first place prize. One to talk about uh, my matchups and stuff and what went on. So, for starters, number one, I played Chamber. <laughs> That's the only deck I can build right now, you guys. So, if you want to give me hate for it, fine, whatever. I played Chamber and I played a pretty, not degenerate build. I mean, any build of Chamber is going to be degenerate. But, um, I did, I did play the build that I showed off in the last deck profile. It worked, uh, fairly well. I, <laughs> I realized, however, that sorry, I'm just pulling up deck card here at the same time, so I'm gonna work on the deck after this. Okay. Anyway, um, so I I played Chamber, a lot of fun. I realized that <laughs> Ancient Gears are a terrible matchup. So what happened? I was the first person to show up. Starts at like six o'clock. Shout out to Emerald Dragon Games. New locals here in uh, Jacksonville, Florida. So I want to give you guys that nice little shout out. There are not only a locals, but they're also a retro video game store. So if you guys like retro video games, GameCube, um, N64, NES, SNES, Sega Genesis, all that stuff, go and check them out. Uh, they're here in the Jacksonville, Florida area. Just type in like Emerald Dragon Games, Jacksonville, Florida, and you'll find it. Um, the locals only consisted of four people. Um, I showed up, and then two other kids showed up, and then uh, a guy that works there, Doc, shout out to my buddy Doc. <laughs> Um, he joined in. So, it wasn't really a four-round tournament. It was more like a loser bracket sort of thing. So, you had to win twice in a row to basically come in first place. So, start off, before the day even started, I have to talk about this. So, the the two guys I that I met were Will and Jarrett, and then Doc joined in. Um, Will and Jarrett had some pretty good trades from Battles of Legends, actually. So, I ended up trading with this uh, with the Jarrett kid. He wants a Flying C and all my Destiny Hero stuff. I'm like, sure. We, we were trading before the tournament started. He takes my Flying C, all my Destiny Hero stuff um, from the Destiny Soldiers pack that I would pulled. And I want his Cypher and Lord Omega, Danko Seca, and his lightly played Guy of the Fierce Knight from LOB, Legend of Blue Eyes. And he's like, can you do all these cards with these three? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> like, already right there, that's a plus. Because I said, Flying C, I value like a dollar. It's like 25 to 50 cents. Um, and then all the other cards were like 10, 15, 20 cents. The maliciouses from Destiny Soldiers were like 40 cents a piece. Like, it, it really wasn't nothing. The, the Denko Seca was maybe 3 to 5. It was the Secret Rare out of Battle of Legends. And then the Omega was maybe 5 to 7 out of Battle of Legends. But he got what he wanted, I got what I wanted. So, we are all good. <laughs> and then, um, I think I did a little bit of training with Will. I don't know what I got. Oh, I got a Time Lord from him. I got the one that changed your life points, 4,000. But anyway, so then we start playing. I play against Will. He's playing Ancient Gear. I'm playing Chamber. We are playing by the link format rules. Like, they were kind of loose on it. Like, yeah, we're playing by it, but we're not playing by it. Game one, he goes Chaos, Ancient Gear, Giant, attack with 4,500. I can't use my hand traps like Battle Fairy Scarecrow. So he attacks me. Next card I draw, I can't do anything. He just swings for game next turn. Uh, game two, I side deck in Skill Drain, beat him. Game three... Game, game two, actually, he played out a Gear Guy Ganex, and he also had an Ancient Gear Halter that he played off a of Power Bond, and I was like, wait a minute. Like, one or two turns past, I go, wait a minute. We're in Link format, and I look over at Doc, I'm like, we're playing Link format, right? And he's like, kind of. I'm like, well, are we or are we not? Because he's got two monsters from the extra deck on the field. And I'm like, I'm assuming we're playing by Link format, because it's July 21st, today starts Link format. He's like, okay, fine, fair enough, we're playing by Link format. I go, okay. Um, we're in an irreversible game state, so just know from here on out, you only play one monster, one monster from yesterday. deck. Um, so he's like, okay, that's fine. I beat him game two anyway. Game three, um, it never came back up, but we knew that, you know, that, that was the thing. Um, so I ended up losing. Ancient Gears is a terrible matchup, I never realized that. You're never going to play against Ancient Gears, because they're a bad deck. Um, Jarrett 
I play against him. He's playing basically Dark World. Some bring a card that was a Dark World. He only exceeded once, and that was in game two. I two owed him. Um, I saw some discarding cards like Dealings and Drag Down in the Grave game two, so that kind of made me scared. Luckily, I still won. And then I traded with Will once the tournament ended because Will won. He won both rounds, I guess you want to call it. So I traded with him, right? He wants. Um, I was going to get three Battle Legend Light Revenge packs. He goes, Can I, Is it cool if I have your three packs? Your Subterra Cave Clash, which is like ten cent, and your Super Rare Effect Bailer, which is like a dollar. Your three Battle Legends packs for the map that I just showed you. I'm like, deal. I shove the packs to him, take the map. We both get our picture taken, and I'm gone. <laughs> I was like, hell yes, boys. <laughs> and from what I overheard Doc say at one point in the tournament, he said that the map's like twenty to twenty-five. I said ten to fifteen. I don't know how much this map goes for. If you guys can find a price on this map. Let me know in the comments, because I truly don't know how much it goes for. I heard 20 to 25 from Doc. I said 10 to 15. I have no idea, and I just dropped a pen. Um, so, yeah, if you guys can find that out for me, I really, really appreciate it. There's no name, no wording on the mat at all, so I have no idea. Um, but what did I learn about this for link format? What I learned is the fact that the game is definitely slower, and it does hurt, essentially, every deck in Yu-Gi-Oh!, like, no matter what. Just... Almost every deck in Yu-Gi-Oh! is based around the extra deck in some way or another, even against the uh, Ancient Gear uh, matchup. He had Gear Gigan X on the board, he was able to search his cards, but then when he wanted to play Power Bond to play out Ancient Gear Houser, he couldn't do it, so he was sitting with more dead cards in his hand, essentially, and he wasn't able to make as big of a board and put as much pressure on the board. And that's definitely something I now realize about Link Format that fixes a lot of things in Yu-Gi-Oh! is that it's no longer a can-you-break-my-board game. It's now a, I have to create this board, and I have to rely on my other monsters' effects, along with making sure I have my Link monsters placed correctly in the Link zones, and have a good back row to back up my board. It's not just, I'm going to spam a bunch of monsters from my extra deck onto the board, and just make it so that you can't win. The Max C challenge, I think, is going to be... It's not going to be as prevalent, but Maxi is going to be an even better card because you don't want your opponent to gain so much advantage to where they can blow away your board and then even if they just make a somewhat semi-decent board in Link format, it won't matter because they've already blown away all the resources that you dedicated to making your board. So, in that sense, you can kind of say it's a can-you-break-my-board game, but I would say maybe 70 to 85% of the game is now no longer based around that. It's more based around playing out your Link Monsters and being able to continue off with your combos after playing your Link Monster and setting up your board that way. So I think that Link Monsters have definitely fixed a lot of things in the game. I know that a lot of people don't like them because they like the speed of Yu-Gi-Oh! However, I don't think Yu-Gi-Oh! was ever meant to be like that, and I just think that Link format right now is very good. We're going to have to see how it plays out, of course. Is we're going to have this for probably like three years before we get, you know, mega hyper summoner or whatever. Or they expand the extra deck to like 20 or 30 cards. But it still is just very refreshing to no longer have to deal with like three or four extra deck monsters on the board. I also realized that Lava Golem is very good. I was playtesting in Link format on Dueling Book. Played against a Blue Eyes player and he had um, Azure Eyes on the board. And I actually misplayed because I had a Lava Golem in hand. I should have attributed his Dragon Spirit of White and his Blue Eyes to play out Lava. Um, he would have taken a 1,000. Well, he did anyway. He was at 15. I ended up attributing his Azure Eyes and his Dragon Sp and his Blue Eyes Chaos Max. And I should have attributed the Max and the Blue Eyes White Dragon because then he would have been stuck with that one monster in his extra deck and he would have been forced to try and get it off his board. So unless the opponent has an out like Book of Moon, Bottomless, or whatever, to something like, say, a Lava Golem or a Kaiju, it's very difficult to get rid of that said card. Um, in my case of being a Chamber player, like I just said, you have a monster in your extra monster zone and it's not a Link monster. I'm sure as hell not going to get rid of that, although I misplayed on Dueling Book and I did. I can just tribute two of your monsters in the main monster zone, give you Lava Golem, you can't exceed with it or anything, then you're screwed. You already have a monster in your extra monster zone, so you can't link summon with it. You can't synchro summon with it. You can't do anything with it. You have to literally clear your own board with like a dark hole, or you have to play Book of Moon, which Will, the ancient gear guy, was playing, but Book of Moon's irrelevant now. So, those are just some things I learned about link forming, you guys. Again, I know it was only four people. I know that it's not a great, um, uh, I guess you could say, uh, teller of the format, if that makes any sense. Um, Emerald Dragon Games is a newer LGS. They only opened up like maybe a month or two ago. They've been around for maybe three months in total, I think. So they are still trying to get Yu-Gi-Oh! up off the ground. They are mostly in Magic, um, the gathering store. But they are trying to get Yu-Gi-Oh! off the ground and all that and running. 
And uh, I always want to support my LGS. And it's nice now that I don't have to drive all the way to St. Augustine or, uh, you know, all the way on over to the the beaches. If you live in Florida and in Jacksonville, specifically, then you know what I'm talking about. Um, but that's about everything I have for you guys. If you guys enjoyed, be sure to leave a like, leave a comment. Let me know what you guys think. Please let me know about this map. If you guys can tell me how much it's worth, because I really have no idea. But thank you guys for watching, as always, and subscribe if you've not already.